Hi everyone, today we're going to learn about t-tables. We're going to learn how to make t-tables and we're going to learn how to use t-tables in patterning. Then we're going to learn how to write an explicit pattern rule. So let's start with this pattern here, 30, 60, 90, and 120. Let's make this a real-life example. Let's say you're driving in a car that's going at 30 kilometers an hour. After one hour, you will have driven 30 kilometers. After two hours, you will have driven 60 kilometers. After three hours, you will have driven 90 kilometers. And after four hours, you will have driven 120 kilometers. Now let's put this information into our t-table. A t-table is called a t-table because it's shaped like the letter t. And the first thing we have to do is put titles. It's very, very important that your titles be related to the information you've been given. So I've chosen hour and kilometer as my titles because this pattern shows the number of kilometers traveled after a certain amount of hours. And then I put in the information that I've been given. So after one hour, I've driven 30 kilometers. After two hours, I've driven 60 kilometers, and so on. Now my t-table is finished. And as you can see, the t-table didn't really give me any new information. It's just a different way to present the information already given. And there's yet another way to present this information, and this is called ordered pairs. The word pair means two, and as you can see, this information comes in groups of two. It comes in pairs. One hour, 30 minutes. Two hours, 60 minutes. They come in pairs. To write an ordered pair, you take the two numbers that go together, you put a comma in between them, and you put brackets around them. And they look like this. One and 30, two and 60, three and 90, and four and 120. These are the ordered pairs that go with this information. So what you have here is three different and separate ways of writing the information given. Let's do another example. Let's take this pattern, 2, 5, 8, and 11. This is a pattern we see, we've seen before. If you remember, it's the amount of money in your piggy bank. You started off with $2, and then your parents gave you $3 every week for taking out the garbage. So we're going to learn a new word now, and that word is term. This pattern currently has four terms. One, two, three, and four. And we can number these terms. This is the first term, this is the second term, this is the third term, and this is the fourth term. So now when I write my t-table, for the titles, I'm going to choose term number and the amount of money in the piggy bank. For my term numbers, I can now write 1, 2, 3, 4. The first term, second term, third term, and fourth term. For the amount of money in the piggy bank, I write 2, 5, 8, and 11. And what this means is that 2 is the first term, 5 is the second term, 8 is the third term, and 11 is the fourth term. Now my t-table is done. Now I can write ordered pairs. So like I said, these two numbers go together. They are a pair. So I put them together, I put brackets around them, and I put a comma in between them, and now I have ordered pairs. Again, these are three different and separate ways of writing the same information. And it's very important when you're writing imp uh, ordered pairs not to forget the comma and the brackets. Now we're going to learn a new way to describe a pattern. In the last lesson, we learned how to write a recursive pattern rule. Today we're going to learn how to write an explicit pattern rule. Again, we're only going to learn how to do this for linear patterns, so we have to make sure our patterns are linear before we start. Let's take the same pattern we were working on. 30, 60, 90, and 120. So to analyze it, first of all we see that it is an increasing pattern. When we ask ourselves by how much, we see that it is increasing by 30 each time. So this is a linear pattern, and the common difference is 30. Let's put this information into the t-table. So, for the titles, I've chosen term number, 1, 2, 3, and 4, and kilometers, 30, 60, 90, and 120. 30 kilometers is our first term number, 60 kilometers is our second term number, and so on. Now you've finished this t-table. The next part is a little bit tricky, but what you're going to do is rewrite your t-table with an empty column in the middle. So you have the same titles, term number and kilometer, and you're going to write in the exact same information, term numbers 1 to 4 and kilometers 30, 60, 90, and 120. In the middle column, you're going to do a multiplication. You're going to multiply the term number by the common difference. Now remember, you found the common difference when you analyzed the pattern. Let's do a couple together. For the first pair, 1 and 30, 
we're going to multiply the term number, which is 1, by the common difference, which is 30. And 1 times 30 is 30. For the second pair, 2 and 60, 2 is the term number. And now the common difference is still 30. Remember, we found the common difference up here. And 2 times 30 is 60. Now the last two I've already done, but for the next pair, 30 and 90, 3 is the term number, 30 is still the common difference, and 3 times 30 is 90. For the last one, the term number is 4, 30 is still the common difference, and 30 times 4 is 120. So now we've done this, and you've probably already noticed that the answer to this multiplication equals the number of kilometers. And that's what we're looking for, the numbers in this pattern. So now we're going to write our explicit pattern rule. So here's the exact same table as we had on the preceding slide, and we're going to use this to write a, an explicit pattern rule. Now the explicit pattern rule is trying to help you find the number of kilometers, or the numbers in this pattern. So we can state it like this. The number of kilometers driven is equal to the term number times 30. So if you remember from when we wrote recursive pattern rules, we used the number before to find the next number. This time we're using the term number to find the next number. Let's do an example. The next term would be the fifth term. If I use the recursive pattern rule, I'm going to be adding 30 here to get 150. Because I added 30 to the term before. If I use the explicit pattern rule, I take my 5, which is my term number, and I multiply it by the common difference of 30, and I still get an answer of 150. So let's make rules out of these. First, an explicit pattern rule uses the term number to find a missing number, and a recursive pattern rule uses the preceding number to find a missing number. Remember, the word preceding means the number that comes before. Now let's use this in another example. Let's take the pattern $1.20, $2.20, Remember, we have to analyze it first to make sure that it's linear before we can do anything with it. So we notice that it is an increasing pattern, because the numbers are getting bigger, and we notice that it's going up by $1.10 each time. This means it is a linear pattern, because it's going up by the same amount each time. So we write our recursive pattern rule, start at $1.10 and add $1.10 each time. This is a good recursive pattern rule. Now let's say I ask you to find the fifth term. So what you would do is you would write out the pattern, and using the recursive pattern rule, you have to use the term before the preceding term to find the next term. So to find the term that comes after 330, you have to add $1.10, and what you get is 440. And to find the next one, you have to add $1.10 to 440, and you get 550. So now you have the first term, the second term, the third term, the fourth term, and the fifth term. And that is the answer to this question. Let's say, however, I asked you to find the 132nd term. You could easily use, well, you could use the recursive pattern rule, but it wouldn't be very easy. You'd have to write 132 numbers. So that's when the explicit pattern rule comes in handy. So what you would do is analyze the pattern just like you did before, and what you see is that it is a linear pattern, and that it increases by a dollar ten each time. And so a dollar ten is the common difference. And now you set up your t table like this with a big column in the middle. And now what you're going to do is multiply the term number times the common difference. And what you see is that the common difference that we found up here is one ten when multiplied by the term number gives you the answer. So the explicit pattern rule would be, to find the amount of money, multiply the term number by $1.10.
and now we can easily find the 132nd term. Because for the 132nd term, the term number is 132, the common difference is $1.10, so when you use a calculator, you find that 132 times $1.10 gives you $145.20. So as you can see, the recursive pattern rule is easier to use if you're trying to find a very small number. However, if you're trying to find a big number, it's much easier to use the explicit pattern rule. Now for homework, I'd like you open to open up your workbook <laughs> I'd like you to open up your workbook to chapter 1.2 and do number one.